Mondays with Mooch. Oh, uh, yeah, let's fire up Mooch Cam right now and uh, get uh, uh, the two cents from Steve Mariucci, my NFL game day morning and NFL Network compadre. How are you, bud? Good morning, Rich. I'm great. So I'm great. How are is, you? What does Jason Garrett do? Neither of these quarterbacks are uh, a viable option, it <sighs> seems, to keep this, this team afloat right now, waiting for Romo to come back. What can he possibly do, Steve? Yeah, tough deal. This is exactly why we try to protect the quarterbacks in this league because right. you saw it when Peyton Manning got hurt. They went into a tailspin. When I had Steve Young, I, uh, we went into a tailspin for a year. It just, if you don't have that guy, you know, you, you can't win games or it's hard. You know, they, they've got to determine if Matt Castle has lost confidence or if doubt has crept into his mind because he's not playing all that well. Um, you know, I thought he might be the best option because he's more mobile than Brandon Whedon. But, you know, and then the Seahawks, this is a good football no, team. No, there's that no doubt about that. But would you, would, you, would you, with the Eagles coming in, you're two and five. You've lost five in a row. This is it. You've got to put, if they put their foot down and win this division game against the Eagles, they're three and five, flat out in the mix, and then maybe get Romo back in week 10. Could, do you, would you go back to Brandon Whedon right now, Steve? Yeah, I don't, I don't think I would right now. Castle's been taking all the snaps, I, I would imagine, mm -hmm. over the last few weeks to get ready. The starter gets the snaps. The backup's over there watching and running scout team, okay? Mm -hmm. So Castle should be a little bit more prepared to do this. Dez is finally back. You know, Dez only had two catches. Richard Sherman locked him down. That won't happen again. He'll be more involved. And so I, I would stay with Matt Castle. But you know what, Rich? Mm -hmm. I would be worried about bringing uh, Tony Romo back Why? too soon. Why? I really would. Well, because, you know, we're all, we have opinions in, based on our experiences, right? When, so when I was coaching in Detroit, Charles Rogers, the receiver, second pick in the draft, he hurt his shoulder, his clavicle, yep. right? Like Tony Romo did. He shattered it. It looked like this in the x-ray. Mm -hmm. And uh, in practice, after the fifth game of the season, he missed the rest of the year. And then he came back the next year, first game against the Bears, and he jumped down for a pass, and it shattered again. I mean, I remember him crying in the locker room. His mom was in the locker room. I mean, this was about nine months of rehab and, and drinking milk and trying to get, you know, it does the body good and see if the calcifies. Right. And, it, you know, I'm worried about Tony Romo coming back too soon from a broken clavicle. Well, and if they're two and six, though, they, you'd have to think if he can, if he says it feels fine, and gets out there and practices, they're going to be. Of course, they're going to have to do it. They're going to have to do it. It will feel fine. Of course, it feels fine. But then get sacked, and then have a guy 300 pounds boom yeah, land on you. And, like Gerald and McCoy, you don't for test instance. That. Yeah, like Gerald McCoy, for instance. It's against Tampa, and Tampa's the one that beat up yeah. that beat up a, a few quarterbacks this year. That's the one that knocked Drew Brees out for a game too. They're they're no they're no joke. Tamp Tampa's. Tampa's getting pretty darn good. I talked to Jameis Winston last night. I mean, this kid, I mean, this whole team is getting better right now. They're starting to turn the corner of this young football team. What do you mean? Would but, you, uh, you what, take, take, take your time with Tony Romo. What'd you, what'd you chat with Jameis about, Steve? Well, you know, he's a game changer, Rich. I do know. And so these, these kids. <laughs> NFL these Network's kids that game come changers. On that show, yeah. 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 These kids that come on the show, you know, we, we stay in touch. You know, we stay in touch. It's kind of fun. You know, I get to know him at the draft, and of course, game changers, and then boom, boom, back and forth. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, when I, when it, you know when he does a good job, I go, hey, good job, yeah. I lead the team, that kind of stuff. And you know, it's kind of cool yeah. staying in touch with these kids. So you mean I'm not I'm mm -hmm. the I'm not the only NFL Network guy that uses uh, someone else's property to promote somebody else's show? Is that what you're saying? I'm not the only self promotional guy on NFL Network. Is that what you're saying, Steve? No, you pretty much are the only <laughs> self promotional guy that we <laughs> have, much, or at least the. Uh, <laughs> you know, spe uh, speaking of getting hurt and quarterbacks being hurt, um, uh, Jay Glazer, while we were on game day morning, had quite the bombshell oh. report on Fox yeah. that, that Andrew Luck has been playing with fractured ribs the last few weeks. And one thing that has not been on the injury report from Indianapolis has been any mention of ribs involving Andrew Luck. How, how does this determination, how does an injury report get made up where something like this may happen? The Colts have denied but it, 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 have, have, let's put it this way. Here, I'm going to put you on the spot, Steve. Have you ever lied on an injury report? Have you ever done that? So, um, <laughs> that's a yes. I'm not just going to give you a yes or okay. a no, all okay. right? Because all right, Steve. being vague, yes. being vague is not a lie, all right? <laughs> so it's like the Patriots. They got a lower body injury. I don't know if that means it's toenail fungus or a broken femur. Yeah. It's, a, it's a lower body injury, right? <laughs> okay, yes. But, so... 
But I know if, if, if Andrew Luck had ribs, I know that they're protecting him or, or, you know, and I don't know how exact we need to be. I remember when I was my rookie year and, yes. and Steve Young hurt his ribs. Boom, he hurt his ribs, bruised his ribs. Well, I was naive, you know, wet behind the ears, and I give the injury report, and I say, Steve Young's got bruised ribs. He's pretty sore today. We'll see if he can practice. Well, after my press conference, he chased me down. He goes, Coach, you just put a bullseye on my ribs. Why did you tell the whole world that I got bad ribs now? Why don't you just put a bullseye on there for the next team? Huh. And that's true. I mean, so, you know, you, know, you, you, you got to tell – I don't want to see you tell a little white lie – but you don't tell the whole truth because really, I mean, if, if a guy has ribs or a guy has this or that, um, not that it's going to be targeted. Uh, everybody's really mm -hmm. got great integrity. But, but I think, you, you know, you, you try to just be a little vague. So yeah, it is possible the that the Colts knew this and you're just we're not putting it on the injury report. We're just not going to do it. because See, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe he had a sh sore shoulder. Mm -hmm. Guys are sore all over the place. You, right. could, you could say, hey, he's got a sore knee, he's got a bruise, uh, you know, Charlie horse, he's got this or that, and, which, and it wouldn't be a lie. Maybe you just don't include everything. <laughs> it, that sounds like that Seinfeld line, right? It's, it's, do you have that? Do you, do you, yeah, I think that's that, that old Seinfeld line. From it's George not a lie if you believe it's it. It's not a lie if you believe it, said George Costanza on Seinfeld, Steve. I love George. I love George. <laughs> and Kramer, too. Steve Mariucci <laughs> joining me here. Let's take a break. I want to have uh, there's a lot more to talk about with Steve Mariucci in 60 ticks of the clock. We're back with more with Steve Mariucci. I definitely want to ask you, uh, Coach, if you think there should be an ability to reverse an outcome of a game 24 hours later if you see on replay that the game should have ended a certain way in real time. That's next here on The Rich Eisen Show. It's not a lie if you believe it. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's George Costanza. Uh, Steve Mariucci joining uh, us here on The Rich Eisen Show. <laughs> Steve, that, that's... That, was, that wasn't on the episode of Shrinkage, was it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't know. But I think George was making out a, was making out an injury report in the National Football League. Oh, I love it. Well, what did you it. make of the Sunday night game, Steve? I mean, that was an unbelievable performance in every phase of the game by the Denver Broncos. What did you make of Aaron Rodgers having only 77 Ooh. yards passing? See, nobody's criticizing Aaron Rodgers for 77 yards, but you are all over Matt Castle for 97 yards, Rich. You know what? That defense of the Denver Broncos, you know, we talked about it. Who's going to be, who could beat the Patriots? And we talked about week 12 in Denver. They've got the right formula. They've got the pass rush. They've got the cover guys. They've got the air that you can't breathe. They got the crowd. They've got everything up there going for them. And you know what the difference was in this game? Mm -hmm. Peyton Manning looked like Peyton Manning. He did. It was uh, it was a terrific it was a terrific performance now by the Denver Broncos. Nobody saw this coming. Um, you know, if 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 some people felt Denver would be it'd be a close game, but this was a beatdown. This was uh, yeah. I think uh, Green Bay you know got a little wake up call there. They're still a good team. I I still think they go to the Super Bowl, but boy, they 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 humbled the Packers. It was Green Bay all across the board. All you guys, Kurt, Marshall, you, Michael, all chose Green Bay. The fans chose Green Bay. Uh, <laughs> if I was given a choice, do you know what I, you know? I would have chosen. You know who I would have picked if I was given a pick. First of all, if first I was of all, actually we don't, we don't give a, you a choice. I know that. They, I, okay. I'm 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 unable for whatever reason. That's why I have this outlet right here <laughs> to make a choice to make a pick. Do you know you know who I chose oh, in our pool? Ooh. Right? Who did I choose? Go ahead and say it. Go ahead and say it. Go ahead and say it, I, Steve. I don't remember. It was Denver. I have no recollection. It was Denver. Because, look, yeah. I, I, yeah. I am not going to sit here and say, I saw what Denver looked like offensively in Peyton Manning the first six weeks of the season. Uh, he's still Peyton Manning. That's still 18 in that helmet. And he looked great, Steve. I mean, he was dropping dimes. He was hitting guys right in the hands, right over the, right over the middle of the field, right in stride. He looked awesome. And you could see this was after a bye, and he's won his last 10 games after a bye. Yes. Um, they kind of, and it was the blend of the Peyton Manning shotgun call of stuff and the Gary Kubiak run game, the stretch play, the zone play, and the keeps off. Peyton Manning comes out of there on a keep and just throws a dart to the second level for a completion. I went, oh, my God, there's that West Coast offense that Peyton Manning, uh, you know, really hasn't run much in his career, but he's executing it well. I mean, I, I said, if they get this running game going, and they mm -hmm. did a much better job, uh, this is a real dangerous team. Well, I can't wait for that that rematch with Tom Brady coming up week well, 12. Well, Irv also pointed out about the Bengals 
and should the Bengals and New England face each other in uh, in in, Oct in in January, that it could be a totally different ball of wax there. What do you think about the Bengals? Certainly, since they're they're seven and zero too, Steve. I really like the Bengals, and um, you know they're healthy, they're undefeated. This is the best record they've ever had in that organization, seven and zero. You know, Andy Dalton is Rodney Dangerfield. Nobody thinks he's one of the elite quarterbacks. Well, he's been, he was leading the, the, the league in passer rating before this, before this uh, weekend. I don't know what he is right now. But, uh, you know, he's been to the playoffs four times in a row. The, the issue with Cincinnati is, yeah, we know they're a good team, but can they take a step? in the playoffs? Can they win a game? Can they get a bye? Maybe they get a bye. I don't know. It's going to be Denver and New England too, but um, this is a team that's got weapons galore on offense. Mm -hmm. It's got a defense with Carlos Dunlap and Geno Atkins and all those guys that are really getting after the quarterback. I like this team. Marvin Lewis has done a great job. Yeah, we're going to we're going to talk a lot about him Thursday night, obviously, because they as uh, NFL Network has exclusive coverage of Thursday night football. Browns at Bengals. We'll be chatting about them. The kickoff week nine. Um, mm. We've seen. I'll take a look at the standings right now. You've got St. Louis, Minnesota, Oakland, all above 500 together for the first time since the 2000 season. Season this late in a season. Which one of those three teams do you here. think, yes, which one of those three teams, Gurley and St. Louis and that defense, Minnesota with that defense and Stephon Diggs now becoming a major factor uh, in the NFL, and Oakland who just whipped the Jets yesterday. Which one of those three teams do you think has the best chance to make a playoff run <laughs> here, Steve? Deep. Yeah, wow. Yeah, those, those are interesting teams because I, I didn't see the Jets coming all over here and playing, and it looked so flat. Even that great, talented defense looked awful. Derek Carr just sliced them up. Um, but, hey, Minnesota mm -hmm. and the Rams play each other, right? They do this, this week. week. Yeah, it's a big and one. And you're talking about Gurley. Mm -hmm. Gurley is going to be the next superstar in the league against Adrian That's Peterson. That's and I mean, and and. You know, in, in, a, in a league now that we throw the ball every down, you got two great runners carrying their football teams. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say carrying their teams, but they're very important. Uh, yeah, and, and it, the wild cards are going to come out of uh, one of those two teams. Yeah, you anyway. think so? But then you got the, the other Saints. One probably be Seattle. I don't know. You got the Saints in Atlanta, and it's it, the wild card race in the NFC is yeah. becoming a major. Uh, a major traffic jam right now. Steve Mariucci joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. So mm -hmm. let's get to the uh, Duke. And the Miami finish. Oh. Would you be up as a coach? <clears throat> Cutcliffe is saying this that Duke should be given the win. When it's at zeros and you are seeing, it doesn't matter if it's in real time or in the 24 hour period after the game. If you can go ahead and take a look at something that happened at zeros that you can go in and replay and reverse a result, would you be up for something like that, Steve? No. No. Because. What I'm in favor of yes. is let's get it right on the replay at when the, when the zeros are on the board, okay? And this one at Miami took nine minutes. Give me a break. Nine minutes to look over the stuff that we are seeing right now plus some other stuff that they looked at, okay? And to me, clearly the knee right, yeah, it was there, right there was yeah. down. The ball wasn't completely out of the kid's hand when the knee was down. Why don't they see that? I, I, can't, I don't know what they're looking at sometimes. Is that what makes Mooch most was, mad? I thought, Is that what makes you most mad? Too? Mooch is mad when, when, you know, millions of people watching on TV see replays and they go, oh, yeah, that knee was down. The ball wasn't out of his hand yet. And, it, and then somebody else is seeing it differently? How does that happen? Well, and, and I know it's a tough job. I know it's a game of inches. But my goodness, it, it, you know, when they looked at it and they took their time and, and, and sensible people that weren't in a hurry to get home and, you know, all this mm -hmm. chaos, um, they said, no, that knee was down. Well, why the not? Knee was down. Why would you be against if, being, if you see a knee is down and you know that this rule, that, that, if, that, that if it was called properly, when there's zeros on the clock, we're not going to go back into the first, second, third, or fourth quarter at any right. point. If it happens with zeros right. on the clock and you can see that this should have been called and it is clear, why not, why not give the win to Duke? They deserve it. Yeah, they do deserve it. And you know what? It, it, it's not going to happen, Rich. I'm just telling you, they're not going to reverse it. So the record is going to stand. And then when they, in that ACC race, when it comes to bowl games and all that kind of thing, 
I think there's got to be in the in the voters' minds saying, hey, instead of uh, you know nine and two or ten and two, this team really should be eleven and one. Let's put them in an appropriate bowl game so they don't get screwed out of millions of dollars because that game should have been reversed right there. That, that ball's not out of his hand it's yet. It's ridiculous. Come on, Steve. Before I let yeah, you go, yeah, I mean you're you know. Cooper and Xander saw that. Yes, I mean, it, that, it, you, know, you can see that. <laughs> they did. They did. But they absolutely did. They were wondering, what in the world does it take nine minutes to review something? I'm like, wow, that's a little bit beyond your years. <laughs> Before I let you go, uh, just like Terry Collins in the World Series last night, were you ever Ooh. talked into some, doing something, making a coaching decision by a player, and then having it burn you? Did that ever happen to you at any point in your career, Steve? Oh, well, yeah, you know, the, the manager or the head coach, they have to make these decisions sometimes with personnel. And, and that was a tough one with Matt Harvey. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, and sometimes you talk to the player and sometimes you, you, talk, you don't. Um, how about this one? I, I was coaching, I was a rookie coach, and Steve Young was our quarterback in San Francisco. And... His first game, he got, boom, he got concussed, right? He got, Warren Sapp got him in the first game. Uh -huh. so, so now he, he misses a game, and so now I'm play, I got to play careful. I don't have to. He was fine, but I played I didn't have a quarterback sneak in the game plan, okay? Mm -hmm. and, so I, and then the other thing is, when we got a lead, I would take him out in the fourth quarter. I would take him out. He hated it. Peyton Manning, Favre, Rodgers, Brady, they want to play the whole game, don't they? They don't want to get taken out just in the last like Matt five Harvey. minutes or sure. ten minutes. Uh huh. Just like Matt Harvey. They don't want. They right. want to finish. That's what they're trained to do. They're wired to finish, mm -hmm. and they're prideful guys. So, but Steve Young knew that I would take him out. I told him, and in in, in a big decision with superstars like that, you know, the head coach should go take him out, not the not the, the quarterback coach, coach yeah, or sure. somebody else. Yeah, the, the 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 main dude ought to take him out. So. We were winning 31 to 7 one game, and it was like, I don't know, seven, eight minutes left in the game. And I, and I said to Marty Morton, hey, Marty, I'm going to take Steve out of the game. He goes, oh, why? Let him play. Let him play. I go, ah, no. He goes, well, then you tell him. I'm not telling him. So, <laughs> so now I'm going so to find Steve Young. So I'm looking. I'm looking around the bench. Yeah. And it's the sidelines. There's a lot of chaos. There's a lot of people and yeah. trainers and doctors. And, I, and so now Steve knows. He, he kind of knows. I think Marty gave him a heads up. Yeah. He's looking for you. So now I'm looking for Steve Young because I'm going to pull him out of the game. Well, Steve Young's hiding from me. He's, he won't let me find him. What do you mean? So I'm looking for Steve Young under the bench over here. Where is my, where's my guy? Because i got to take him out of the game. Mm -hmm. I found him, Rich. He was hiding behind the kicker's net. And when I got him, when I got, I said, there you are. And he goes, no, no, don't take me out. I was like some kind of vampire. He was going, don't take me out, coach. I go, you're out. And it's like... He was behind the kicking net. And so, but he came out. He came out. He wasn't happy about it, but, mm. you know, that's how it goes. Yeah. You got to make the tough call yeah, sometimes. I, I and know. sometimes you got to play, you got to play hide and seek. Steve, good chatting with you as always. I'll see you Thursday. I'll see you Thursday, Rich. You bet. That's Steve Mariucci. That's our Mondays with Mooch segment right here <laughs> on The Rich Eisen Show. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.